How does PAD compare to CAD? PAD versus CAD. Peripheral arterial disease versus coronary artery disease. Allow me to show you a slide that will demonstrate the similarities and differences between the disease processes. Okay, everybody knows what CAD is. It's arterial occlusive disease of the arteries in the heart. PAD is the same process, atherosclerotic occlusive disease of the arteries in the legs. That's what this image shows. The downstream result, the natural course of untreated and undiagnosed PAD is in most cases, not all, most cases, major amputation. Major amputation is devastating, both from a morbidity and mortality standpoint and from a cost standpoint. All in cost about $120,000 to society. Of course, we all know that there's a secondary prevention mechanism, endovascular revascularization. That procedure, if the patient's caught early enough, by relatively benign endovascular means, balloon angioplasty, atherectomy, and stent, or some combination therein, arterial blood flow can be restored and amputation can be prevented or at least uh, postponed for many years later. Okay? Let's compare PAD versus CAD. The prevalence of PAD, a lot of people don't know this, is actually slightly higher than that of CAD. It, it makes sense that they'd be similar because they're essentially the same disease process, arterial occlusive disease in the body all by the same risk factors, diabetes, smoking, lipids, cholesterol, obesity, you name it. So it's very rare that a patient would have fulminant CAD and pristine the clean leg arteries or vice versa. They generally occur together. But the prevalence of PAD is actually slightly higher than that of CAD. Now, let's talk about the awareness of the two. PAD is significantly has lower awareness in society than CAD, not just amongst physicians, not just amongst lay people, but also amongst physicians. If you think about it, if Grandma Gertrude has chest pain or shortness of breath, she immediately thinks, I might be having a heart attack. I need to go to the ER. She might even know that she needs an EKG, chest X-ray, cardiac enzyme. Even if she doesn't know that part, she knows that she needs to go to the ER. She might be having a heart attack. How is it that Grandma Gertrude knows the exact appropriate management for suspected CAD in the coronary event? It's because the awareness of CAD <laughs> has fortunately been raised to very high levels over the past few decades. That's great. That's a win for society and a win for patients. Why is it then that PAD, arguably an equally devastating disease, with a higher prevalence, the awareness is so much lower? It's unfortunate, and that's one of our missions, is to increase that here at PAD specialists. Uh, as we mentioned, the natural course of much of PAD, not all, is major amputation. Here's a sobering statistic. 60% of patients who undergo a major amputation have never had a singular revascularization procedure attempted. And that's sad because, as we mentioned, many, if they were caught and treated early enough, this amputation could have been prevented or at least postponed for years. And here's the most sobering statistic of all. Out of patients who undergo major amputation, had they been caught early enough, 95% of those would have been preventable. That's secondary prevention 101. Primary prevention, stay healthy. Don't get obese. Don't get diabetes. Don't smoke. In your arteries will never become occluded. But this is America. You know, it's standard American diet and things happen. And you have a genetic prevalence, so your arteries get occluded. Secondary prevention is the way to go. A PAD specialist, someone, someone like us, get evaluated. If you need an endovascular procedure, that can be done safely with great effect. And those amputations can be prevented or at least postponed. So PAD, CAD, similar diseases. PAD, the same or slightly high prevalence. Awareness is much lower. So uh, referring to this, patients watching this video, keep in mind, if you have a wound or leg pain on your legs, if a wound isn't healing, you have leg pain, and there's no other obvious cause like arthritis or cramps, think PAD. Has to be referred by your uh, primary care physician or podiatrist, hopefully to someone like us, PAD specialist. Uh, referring physicians out there, um, just as chest pain and shortness of breath are part of the questionnaire for every single patient seeing any doctor for anything. Our mission is to make wound or leg pain, wounds or leg pain, equally as common as asking about chest pain or shortness of breath. Because if we do that, if everyone does that, actively asks about wounds and looks for wounds and asks about leg pain, you'll identify a lot more PAD early, which is, of course, our mission. Hopefully, you'll refer to us or refer to someone who can evaluate those patients. And if they meet the criteria for endovascular procedure, they can do that procedure and open up their arteries and prevent the worsening of disease.